with its tropical climate, natural beauty, and traditional culture, Thailand has long been a popular tourist destination. But now there's another reason drawing people here, a quiet revolution in caring for the elderly. The care system for elderly people in Europe is not working anymore, and it's going to be a big, big problem. In the West, horror stories of abuse and neglect in care homes, not to mention rising costs, are driving families to look for alternatives, forcing many to make difficult decisions. I got even letters from school friends of, of my wife telling me I'm an idiot to bring her, to dispose her here. And turn your body. 101 East follows those who send their loved ones across the world for their final years. It's been a year since Walter Glur saw his wife Maya. He and his daughter Tanya have flown more than 13 hours from their home in Switzerland to see her. But it's a bittersweet reunion. Maya is not sure who they are. Maya, look, who is this? So, oh. this is Priska. Tanya, Tanya, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Who is Tanya? Who is Tanya? Maya, look. Who is Tanya? Look. Maya was just 50 and running a Michelin-starred restaurant with her husband when she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's nine years ago. It was devastating for the family. She knew uh, what, what's coming and she, she was crying every morning, you know. And one morning I remember I said to Maya, you know, I promise you one thing, I will always do the best for you, always, not for me, not for anybody else, just for you. And she was kissing me and saying, thank you so much. Thank was she you. scared? Were you scared? I was scared, she was scared. Maya's home is now a villa at the Ban Kamlan Chai Aged Care Center in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Her family brought her here two years ago when it became apparent she needed 24-hour care. But this is going on for 10 years and is slowly uh, taking her apart from me, slowly, slowly. This is like, you know, saying goodbye in, in slow motion. And um, that is the hard thing about that. The disease now for us is worse. In the beginning, it was bad for her very bad for her because she realized what happened. But now it's for us, it's for us, it's, it's very hard. <laughs> Walter says bringing Maya here was the best option for her. But back in Switzerland, not everyone agrees. Yeah. Well, I got even letters from school friends of, of my wife telling me I'm an idiot to bring her, to dispose her here. To dispose uh, her? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's not nice, but they, these people don't know anything. They have never even looked for half an hour in the internet what really happened with Alzheimer patients. And of course, lots of people talk and he brings her to Thailand, yeah you know, get rid of her or whatever. The main reason was, where is the best place for Maya? And we all agreed, this is this place here. We couldn't find anything better. So I think she deserves to be in the best place in the world. Ooh. He can laugh for all of it. Mary Inman is also a long way from home. Where yeah, you came from? Me? Yeah. I come from... Wait a minute. 
from England or from France America? Or America? Oh, I've been, I've been in, in, in the America. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and there's a mother in America. There's, I, I, I'd say, you know, I'd rather go and sit down now. It's just too hot. Unsure of where she is and unable to remember where she's been, Mary is also destined to live out her days in northern Thailand, cared for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Today, she's visiting a local butterfly park. Yeah, it's beautiful, but then there's nothing you can do, is there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know I've got to get out of here. I want to go home. Mary suffers from dementia. Her family brought her here from the UK almost three years ago. We were worried about the gas fire. Um, you know, we had to give keys to all the neighbors in case she got locked out of the house, which happened a few times. Did she? Yeah, yeah, yeah she got locked out. She, she, she would she'd go out in the evenings, with, you know, in a, in a nighty uh, a couple of times. And, yeah. you know, luckily the neighbors found her and, and brought yeah. her back into the house. Give the money away. Her son, Michael, and daughter-in-law, Emily, looked at care homes in the UK. We did take her to a care home in Surrey to have a look. It was an extremely nice, high-end um, uh, facility, but it was a facility. It was like a hospital ward. The rooms were very, very nice, but they were small, and there was a ho hospital beds. And, right. Hospital um, beds, yeah. And people you know, had you've got their... the hospital signs up, the exit signs. You know, you have that feel and smell of, of detergent and... Um, Unit institution. And a couple of guests asked us if, if we could help them leave. They feared Mary wouldn't survive in such a sterile environment. Then they heard about a care resort in Thailand. What was Mary's reaction when you brought up the subject of perhaps going to Thailand? And of course, as soon as we mentioned it to her, you know, her face, and we showed her the pictures and, yeah. and the resort, and, yeah. and she, she, um, she it's interesting, she, she was excited. Mary might now be far away, but Michael makes sure she's not forgotten. So this is the picture of the day that Granny arrived in England wow. from the Middle East on the boat. Born in Palestine, the daughter of a British soldier, Mary later met and married an army officer herself. She lived all over the world, Cyprus, Malaya, Singapore, Hong Kong. So she really had this international she upbringing. did. She did. Yeah, you know, I think that helped shape her. You know, she needed to be someone that could uh, go into a new school and into a new community and sort of integrate very quickly. Um, you know, she's used to living in different parts of the world. Today, I'm visiting Mary at her new home, care resort Chiang Mai. Her villa is next to one of the two swimming pools. Why don't you sit down? No, you don't. You don't. Go on, go and get your bloody will. <laughs> Be careful, Mary. Well, come on, come and sit on. He's only little. He's only little. It's very small. A photo book her family sent is filled with pages of a life that is lost to her. Who's that? That's this. That is him. No. And that's my dad. Oh, look at that sweet face. She has four dedicated carers who work rotating shifts around the clock, ensuring she is never left alone. I heard that you were a good dancer. Your son told me. Have I got a son? <laughs> I, I, I can't remember now to remember. <laughs> The carers are, they're, they're remarkable. I mean, they, yeah, they're like her daughters. And I think she gets more comfort and pleasure from their presence than ours. I think we stress her out. She knows she's supposed to remember things about us, but she doesn't. And so that really stresses her. So it's a 45 minute drive there and one hour drive back. Peter Brown is a British hotelier who bought this holiday resort 11 years ago. It was a pond before. He transformed part of it into a dementia care facility after realizing how badly his mother was looked after back home in the UK. I went to visit my mother 
in an English care resort. And within 15 minutes, I'd called the ambulance and she went to hospital for three months. What happened? She got cancer of the throat. But she was dying in a care resort and nobody was doing anything about it. I'm not having to go at that one place. It's the same philosophy everywhere else. Not enough care staff. After six o'clock at night, no care staff. You're on your own if you have trouble after six o'clock at night. I passionately believe that care helps people have a better life. It's not about how long you're going to live, it's how much you can enjoy the years you've got left. And if you take a disease like dementia, you've probably got at least eight years to live. So it becomes quite important that those eight years are quite enjoyable, not locked in a room treated like a child. Very good. OK, this one, open your hands out to the side. So I wanted to do things a little bit differently. I couldn't do what I want to do in the UK because of the cost of staffing. So Thailand has the advantage of being cheaper. It also has the advantage of the Asian respect for the elderly. It makes a big difference. OK, shall we get up? Let's go. Six weeks after moving into the same resort, it's already making a huge difference for Dusko Doder. A former journalist for the Washington Post, he reported from Moscow in the 1980s. The summit is, in, in, in many ways, a great boost to Mr. Gorbachev, no matter what. It was a time of huge historical upheaval. It's also where he met his wife and fellow journalist, Louise. He's a lot older than I am, and he was the best journalist in Moscow. And he helped me on a lot of stories, introduced me to a lot of people. For me, it was very exciting because he opened whole new worlds for me, uh, helping me understand Soviet Union, and that was sort of how we fell in love. <laughs> I remember watching the baby the first time. Mm-hmm. That's right. You were looking very um, worried about how you were going to do it, right? Yeah. Look, how, look how tiny he is. Look at you. Probably. After a life abroad, the couple settled near Washington, D.C., where they wrote books together. But everything changed about two years ago when Dusko suffered a massive heart attack and brain hemorrhage. I was working, I was, I, I was doing a remote job as an editor. I finally had to give that up. And the thing about caregiving is it, it happens very slowly. He, he lost abilities very slowly. So by the end of last year, I don't think I quite realized how much I was doing for him. But my son came up and took care of him for a few days, and he just said to me, Mom, Dad should have been in assisted living months ago. You can't do this. And um, I was, by that point, I was bathing him, dressing him. When you looked at care homes, assisted living in the States, what did you find? I couldn't see Dust go in there, and he did not want to go in there. Um, he would not want to be sitting in a sitting room with other people staring at a television screen, which a lot of people do, and not you know, simply because they don't, you know, they're not able to do anything else. And just a light bulb went off my head. I thought, I'm gonna Google assisted living overseas, which I did, and I found this resort. Sounded too good to be true, but I thought, well, I'll go and take a look. The minute I walked in here, I, I fell in love with it. It was just so beautiful. More importantly, she says, moving to Thailand meant they could stay together, something that would have been impossible in the U.S. We brought our dog, and I'm slowly starting to make friends here. So I can see that there's going to be a sort of a life where I can be with him a lot. Um, I, I'm working on this book right now, so I spend much of my day uh, writing. But always when he comes to lunch or dinner, I can join him. And I feel it's the right compromise for me because I don't, you know, I, yes, it's, it's, my life is still circumscribed by being here with him. But I, I have a lot of freedom to go out and do things and make new friends and to be a person to be a wife again. A 
Across town back at Maya's care home, it's also party night. It's less a resort and more a community for dementia patients and their families. Remember Jenny, and now uh, we have her niece are visiting us again. Martin Woodley opened this center in 2003. His father had just taken his own life because he couldn't cope with his wife's dementia. There were few care options for his mother in their native Switzerland, so Martin brought her here to Chiang Mai. He found full-time carers for her and realized he could help others too. This is an experiment, this is something new, but it's the way maybe we have to find new models of care because the care system for elderly people is not working anymore and it's going to be a big, big problem. Oh, look, there's is the France. Oi, so long you see. He now has 14 patients with round the clock carers living in 10 different villas. Good morning, Ruth. Residents meet up for meals. And outings are arranged for those who are able to go. Today, they are visiting an elephant park. You see? Elephant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's all. Maya, look. Tell me about the caregivers that you've brought in here. They are empathic <laughs> to uh, people with dementia disease. They love them, they respect them. And I mean, this is this uh, wonderful thing in, in Thailand is the way they approach, they go closer to elderly people, but still with respect. Respect is something Eileen Chubb says is often missing in nursing homes in the West. The former care worker in the UK now runs a nonprofit that investigates abuse in homes across the country. I don't blame people, like I say, for looking abroad. I don't blame them. But I do think um, it's a damning indictment on this country's care system. Is, is it a private home? The private home, yeah. And it's a big, big company with big profits. For decades, her hidden camera has captured countless cases of unsanitary conditions and abuse in both public and private care homes in the UK. People were left with bed sores to the bone. So when you walked onto the unit, you could smell dead flesh. People were screaming in agony. So people were pushed over, um, hit, spat out. They had their wedding rings stolen. We had one case where a lady had maggots in a wound. Maggots. You know, people just being ignored. Um, people just sitting, sobbing and crying in a corner but the family didn't see them. Thailand may provide better care options than these UK homes, but Eileen still has reservations. The number one qualification to be a carer, you have to have communication. And if you haven't got that, you know, even if you've got compassion, you can't translate it. You can't translate it to the person and show them how you can make them feel safe. And believe me, it's the best job in the whole world, but I'm sorry, if you, if you can't communicate with somebody, then you can't care for them. Maya? But back in Thailand, Walter disagrees. What do you think about the, her carers, these young women who look after her? She has three beautiful women taking care of her. Um, they speak all English, which is nice. I, I like to talk to them also. They can explain to me how Maya is doing. I, I think perfect team. She has a really good team here. Yeah. One of Maya's full-time carers is Lar Yodko. เหมือนเพราะว่าเราอยู่กับเขาตลอดเราแทบจะเหมือนกับเขาเป็นส่วนหนึ่งของครอบครัวแล้วค่ะบางทีเวลาเราไปไหนมาไหนเราก็ยัง
two sons and many gifts in tow. ตามสอบไปแล้วแม่ก็ตั้งก็มาพยายามอะไรอ่ะหนักเหมือนกันไม่ตอบรถตอบการไปอ้าวก็หนักกับเพื่อนแม่ของเขาแล้วก็การเล
20 years ago. She was really, yeah, the best person I've ever met. Ice cream, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, and hut. Let's make a hut, Maya. Yeah. Can we go? Can we go? Can we go? Yeah, we can. Where can we go? Yeah, that's right.